<laughs> better. That was the plus side. Did she give you any medicine? What did she give you? You don't know, but you got medicine. Sometimes when my children complained of a tummy ache, I'd give them boiled seven up, cooled down. Anyone ever get that? Cowpull is another one. And all of these are different sorts of medicines. The thing about it is everyone's tummy ache got better. So the different medicines all worked. But my story this morning is about medicine that didn't taste as good as Calpol or any of those ones you got. It was long ago, this man had a really bad tummy ache and he went to his doctor. Now his doctor's father had been a doctor and his grandfather as well. And the man went in and he says, oh doctor, I have a dreadful pain in my tummy. I can't sleep, I can't eat, I can't work. And the doctor said, well, here's some herbal medicine and go take it and you'll be fine in the morning. So he took the medicine and he got up, didn't work it. Tommy ache was still there. He'd been awake all night with it. Went back to the doctor a few days later, and this time the doctor gave him some syrupy thing to take. Again, he went back and it didn't work. The next time the doctor gave him some tablets, so I went home, took them. They didn't work either. Eventually, he kept going back and forth and back and forth, and eventually the doctor says, look, I've tried everything for you. I have no more medicine. Then he had a sudden thought. He said, you know, in my grandfather's book, there was a very strange cure for tummy ache. And if you want to try it, try it, but it's very strange. And the doctor told him to get a large onion, two heads of garlic, a pint of vinegar, and three tablespoons of chili powder, put them in a saucepan, boil them up, liquidize it, and when it's cold, to eat it, drink it, take it. The smell in the kitchen was absolutely foul. When he went to take the medicine, he had to hold his nose to get it down. Half an hour later, what happened? He was better, he was better Ailey. He got up and he said, my pain is gone, it's wonderful. He said, I'm starving. Let's put on a fry I could eat for Ireland. <laughs> He went to the doctor and he said, thank you very much, doctor. My pain is gone. I'm back at work. I'm in great form. And the doctor got out his notes and wrote, says, I tried this very strange cure of my grandfather's, but it worked great. Years went by. The man never got a tummy ache again. Another patient got a tummy ache, went to the doctor, tried him with all the different medicines, the syrup, the medicine, the herbs, the tablets. Nothing worked. The man was in agony. So the doctor remembered quicker this time. He said, well, my grandfather had this very strange cure and it worked. And if you want to try it, try it. It doesn't taste too good, but if you want to try it, try it. Does anyone remember what he was to put in the medicine? Lily? Onions. Onions. Two heads of garlic. Two heads of garlic. Three spoons of chilli powder. Three spoons of chilli powder. Vinegar was the fourth one. Boil them up, take them, and it's, it's going. And your man said, OK, right down the hatch it goes. And you know what? Half an hour later, he said to his wife, I feel really strange. And he died. <laughs> and the woman went, the wife went to the doctor and she said, I'm sorry, John died last night. So the doctor said, well, made a note, just goes to show you what cures one person is very dangerous for another. We're all different. Thank you, children, for joining in. You're going down to Sunday Club with Emer and Jennifer. And as the children go down to Sunday Club, we're going to get ready to sing our next hymn this morning. And it is hymn number 20, lovely Irish hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
for my reading this morning, I've chosen a piece. It was published in the Guardian newspaper about three weeks ago. And it was written by someone called Stuart J. Sharp. And it tells how he came to write his first symphony. And I chose it because the music that came to Mr. Sharp did not come from his physical senses. So it's an amazing example of a transcendental experience. I grew up being told that I had all the musicality of a brick. I couldn't read or write a single note. Music didn't feature in my early years. Instead, I became a cook. I married, and in due course, my wife gave birth to our first daughter. Two years later, we were expecting our second child. The labor went disastrously wrong and our son was stillborn. Being the man in the family, I felt it was my duty to hold everything together for my wife and daughter. At home that night, I was utterly crushed and empty. I was devastated beyond words. It took a long time to find sleep, but when I slept, I had the most wonderful dream. In the dream, all I could hear was music. When I woke up, I couldn't stop replaying the music in my mind. This wasn't just a simple melody, it was a symphony, and somehow I could identify each instrument playing and every single note of the piece. The years passed, my marriage broke up, I moved to London, and at one time I ended up living in a squat. Through all this time, the music of my dream stayed with me. I bought a guitar for 50 pence in a charity shop and thought myself how to pick out the tune on it. One day, I played the tune for Anthony Wade, who was a professional musician. He liked the tune, but told me that the work of having the music orchestrated would take in excess of a hundred thousand pounds. It took me 15 years to save the necessary cash. When I had enough saved, I sought out Anthony Wade again. He helped me make a demo tape and introduced me to the conductor, Alan Wilson. Needless to say, Alan Wilson was deeply skeptical when he heard that the music I wanted him to orchestrate it had come to me in a dream. When he listened to the demo, he told me that what I had done was the equivalent of doing brain surgery without ever having attended medical school, and that the work had the potential to be a masterpiece. Alan Wilson booked the Philharmonia Orchestra and 20 years after my dream, I heard the music played exactly as I had dreamed it. I was in tears as I listened to it. Finally, the notes from my dream were released into reality, and the reality sounded every bit as wonderful as the music I heard in my dream. Let us pray. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves. When our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little. When we arrived safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider seas where storms will show your mastery. Where losing sight of land, we will find the stars. 
We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push us into the future filled with strength, with courage, hope, and love. Amen. And now we're going to listen to a piece of music. It was written by Shari, and she's going to be accompanied by Josh on the piano and Doreen on the flute. back at home. 